So the Fitbit Inspire 3 is the smallest and most affordable device in Google's wearable offerings. And that's a good thing. For those that want a simple, thin, lightweight device to wear 24 seven to get accurate health trends, then the Inspire 3 is the device that I think you should get. So let's dig into the reasons why I think this device is a great bargain and let's see how it compares with its bigger brother, the Fitbit Charge 5. The first thing I immediately noticed when I first used this device was the excellent color OLED display. I have to say, this is a massive generation upgrade. And the fact that it uses OLED technology means that one, it's very easy to see this in direct sunlight, thanks to the amazing uh, contrast and inky blacks. And number two, it's quite battery efficient, even with the always on display. Yes, you heard it right. This tiny little fitness tracker has an always on display. I'll explain why always on display, uh, how, it, how it affects the battery life when I talk about the pretty impressive battery life that, that this device has. But being able to support always on display is always a welcome feature. And it just makes this fitness tracker function more reliably, more reliably like a watch. Finally, I don't have to use that kind of weird rude gest wrist gesture when I'm, let's say I'm in a meeting and I wanna check the time. I don't have to like move my wrist in a more obvious way. It just ends up being a little bit more subtle. You can look to the side. And as this is especially important when you're in front of someone. Let's talk about the physical form factor of the Inspire 3. This device is astonishingly light, weighing at a mere 19 grams, including the silicone bands. If you're someone that gets annoyed having to wear a clunky, thick watch, then this is, a, this is the perfect device uh, for you. This is an example of a really thick watch that I, I can't wear when, I'm, when I use it for exercise. It's just a little bit too uh, clunky. And having something like this, I'm able to exercise. Because the Inspire 3 is super thin and lightweight, I don't notice this device when I go to sleep or even exercise, which makes me want to wear this device 24 seven every day. And that's a really good thing because you probably want to wear this device as much as possible in order to, in order to get the most accurate health reports and detect long-term trends. So let's talk about the actual controls of the watch. The two sides act as a capacitor button and you can press them. Tapping them will always take you to the home screen or wake up the device. I like this kind of function of the side buttons more than the Charge 5, which where it's the, the Charge 5 sides had these ECG and EDA sensors that were like kind of shiny, they looked pretty nice, but they didn't offer any navigation or buttons. So I, I kind of much prefer the look and style of this. And of course, for those who want to track their swimming exercises, this device is fully waterproof, so you don't have to worry about causing damage when swimming. However, I do want to caution that swimming in a, in a salt water ocean, the salt can be very corrosive and it can cause some damage. So I would prefer to kind of keep it uh, clean after you're done swimming, clean it with fresh water after you are in the ocean. So in terms of the silicone bands, this box includes a small and large band. I opted to use the smaller band, as you can see here, and it fits perfectly. I like that it doesn't ha have any extra flap. There's no extra flap there. And the vice is uh, lighter when, it uses the small, when I use the smaller band. The one thing you'll see is that I'm using the orange kind of yellow, yellowish band, but they sell separate bands like the mesh steel one or trans or pretty cool translucent colors. Personally, I do like the silicone bands as they're easier to clean after a sweaty workout or I was swimming in the lake and they don't give any skin irritation, which is really good. And they're quite easy to swap in and out depending uh, on how you want to look or maybe on your mood. Now the locking mechanism isn't as good as his bigger brother, the Charge 5, but once you get the hang of it, you kind of just angle it and you just kind of clip it in, it becomes uh, just as easy. So this clipping mechanism is just one of the few ways that Fitbit tries to pass savings to its consumers by kind of implementing a simpler band lock mechanism. Now, one of the strongest points with the Inspire 3 is the long and enduring battery life. So I've tested two scenarios, one with always on display enabled and obviously the other with it disabled. And I was very impressed with the results. I got around like the, the quoted 10 days of use with the always on display disabled. And this is perfect if you're gonna go on a week long vacation and you don't wanna risk bringing that little charger with you and maybe even losing it. So, however, with the always on display enabled, it performs just about half as good. So you get around five days, which is still quite pretty amazing for this little tiny small device. I'm truly impressed with the Fitbit engineers, how could they cram so much like a blood oxygen sensor, a heart rate sensor, a vibrant OLED display into such a small form factor. It is quite nice. My only con, or maybe it's a, minor complaint is that the charger isn't magnetic like the Charge 5. Again, this is where Fitbit can cut a little bit in terms of the features and pass the savings to you so that, you know, it's a fair trade-off. Given that it's a 10-day battery, you probably are going to be fine charging every once in a while. Notifications are very important when it comes to smart devices. And I want to quickly mention that all Fitbit devices are absolutely amazing when they handle notifications, including the Inspire 3. 
On Android, you especially get to benefit from quick native interactions with notifications, which is something that is very rare on ultra compact fitness trackers like this one. For example, in this transit app, you can actually track the bus through notifications and you can interact with the notification by either pausing or refreshing predictions. Here's another example where I interact with the notification to play and pause a podcast that I'm listening to. This is really nifty and very cool. All right, so I talked a lot about what I really like about the Fitbit Inspire 3. Now let's go into some of the things I don't like so much. So let's go into the cons. The first thing I wanna say is that thank you for introducing the find my, find my phone feature. I've been waiting for this for the Charge 5 for a long time and it's finally here. But in terms of the actual smart features on this Inspire 3, I still think it's a little bit lacking. And this is something that is pervasive in, even into the other uh, series, so like the Charge 5. More specifically, I would really wish I could see my next calendar event, for example. And this is something that other competitors do very well. They show you the calendar when the next event is occurring. And yes, you, you will still get notifications from Google Calendar or whatever calendar app you use. You'll get those native notifications when your next event is coming. But I generally like to use a watch in a way that it allows me to see my next event. It's, it's all about scheduling. It's all about time, time management. And I think that's one important smart feature that is essential. And I think they can implement it because, you know, they're working with Google. Google Calendars is there, so they should be able to implement it. And I pray that in a future software update, they do bring this. Now, another inherent con with this type of device is that it's pretty small and it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to see uh, like the little notifications. There's gonna be obviously less space to show text for your notifications. And overall, the experience of navigating a smaller watch is more difficult than for example, a Charge 5. When I compare these two side by side, I am really impressed. Whoa, like the Charge 5 looks so big and it's kind of funny when you put them in a relative uh, place. So all in all, I do find that being able to see just the time, so like the actual, the most important information that you need day to day, just being able to glance at the time, that font is big, well enough to see, and I can see the date and everything, but it's really just a little bit more of a cramped display. And of course, this is a trade-off that you will be getting when you get a smaller form factor. And this is a good trade-off because it becomes less invasive, it becomes less annoying to wear day-to-day, 24-7. -to -day, so, you know, you have to pick what you want and what you value the most. Now, in terms of the navigation overall, I have to say it's a very simple device, but it's very responsive. And I think it's a tad more responsive than the Charge 5, which is very important because when you're actually using it, let's say you wanna set a timer or set an alarm, it's really, really easy. And I find that, it, I, mean, I don't find it too difficult to actually navigate device, chain settings and stuff like that. But for the most part, given that it's a small device, it's more passive, you're just looking at it uh, for at a glance. I find it more than sufficient to actually use it day to day. And the smaller screen doesn't really bother me that much. Another smart feature that I really wish this watch would have, or this fitness tracker, would be the weather. Now, of course, you can upgrade to the Versa, Versa series, or the bigger smart Fitbit watches, and you're gonna get all these smart features by default because obviously it has a bigger screen, more computing power. But I just wish I could just, you know, maybe glance at my watch, my fitness tracker, my, the Inspire 3, and just see, you know, is it gonna rain in the next couple hours? So that would be a nice add-on in the future. Hopefully they do add it at some point. And for my last thing that I really wish that Fitbit would improve upon is the exercise detection when it comes to strength training. So if you're gonna go, go to the gym and lift weights, I really wish there was a way for it to detect repetitive motions so that I can keep track of my reps, my sets and all that stuff. It does a really good job at tracking things like your running, your biking, things that are like repeated motions and that. But if I go to the gym and start lifting weights, my heart rate doesn't go up high enough that it would detect it as an exercise. There's no repetitive, it's not able to detect that information. So. That's one thing that I really wish that Fitbit would do is be able to detect whether I'm doing a strength training regimen. So let's talk about the most important topic and that's health tracking. And one of the things I really like about using a name brand fitness tracker or smartwatch or whatever is that it's backed by Google, it's backed by Fitbit and that you're gonna get more accurate health reports. And I'm gonna compare this to maybe some of the no name brands, maybe like there's Chinese brands out there like Xiaomi and Personally for myself, having this name brand of Fitbit or Google, just because I know that they invest a lot of R&D research and development into making sure that their algorithms, their sensors are working right and that they're comparing it through other users and stuff, and stuff like that to give you a very accurate health report. That is something that I really, really think is underrated when it comes to using Fitbit devices. If you use like a no-name device, Think about that company. They don't have a huge R&D bu budget to do, you know, very sophisticated algorithms in the back end to, to kind of give you a very accurate health report. Now, obviously, Fitbit is 
the world-class sleep tracker or one of the best sleep trackers out there. And that's because of their algorithms. They have uh, plenty of data. Obviously they're working with Google to make things even better and better over time. And it's been proven by many YouTubers that I'll put a link in the description to one of them, the quantified scientist that has shown that this Fitbit sleep tracking is very good in detecting the sleep phases. So whether you're in REM sleep, light sleep, or deep sleep. Now I've tested health tracking in many scenarios in on the previous charge five. The UI is very similar. You can subscribe to the premium membership and I will leave a link in the description to that specific video about charge five where I go into great depth about the, all the health tracking features and what it presents so that you can get a sense of what it is. Basically, you're not gonna sacrifice much. The only thing that you're not gonna get with the Inspire 3 is things like ECG sensor or EDA sensor, but you're still gonna get the basic heart rate sensing, the walking, the auto detection when it comes to exercises and all that stuff. And that is the most important thing. Now, for example, based on my own personal experiences, I found that the heart rate tracking is extremely accurate. And let me give you some practical examples. Like I said, I'm not looking for like the specifics. I'm not gonna go out and compare this to a dedicated heart rate sensor that's strapped to my chest. That's obviously gonna be more, a lot more accurate, but it's also a lot more inconvenient than just having it on your wrist 24 seven. So what I've noticed is that, let's say I'm doing a casual bike ride and let's say I'm using my electric bike. It will detect that exercise as a, you know, an exercise that's happening because I'm biking, but you'll notice that the trends overall for my heart rate are rather low. So my heart rate doesn't go up because I'm using an electric bike. It's pedal assist, so I'm not pushing myself. However, if I switch to one of those bike share bikes, like in Toronto, where you have to actually pedal and they're very inefficient because they're really big and bulky, you can see that my heart rate actually goes up higher. So this is an overall trend that you can see like, well, I didn't really push myself that hard the other day because I was on my electric bike all the time. But then let's say I went skateboarding or I went on an actual bike, a real bike, and you can see that my heart rate has trended so much higher over that period of exercise. And that has really made it really cool to be able to accurately get a kind of like a health report. And if you do this over like say 365 days, you can really see the trends in your health. Are you trending towards being more active or are you trending to be more lazy, uh, sitting on the couch more often? And that's a bit, and that's a bad sign. So being able to get these long-term trends and be able to make actual um, you know, decisions based on real data is extremely important. I think this is what the Fitbit and the Google collaboration really does inspire. No pun intended of the Inspire 3. Now, as I mentioned before, the sleep tracking is absolutely amazing. What's really crazy is that the Inspire 3 actually has SPO2 tracking, and this is new from the previous generation. So this little device, despite being so small, can support 10 days of, you know, battery life or usage, but still have the SPO2 tracking. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically that sensor on the rear of the watch, when it uses the SPO2 tracking, generally speaking, like what I've experienced with Garmin devices is that it uses a lot more battery. So I'm really impressed that this little device can actually see the variation in your blood oxygen saturation, which is very important for your sleep. Let's say, for example, you have a lot of variations that could be a sign of sleep apnea, which is a condition that I have personally. And that's something that maybe you need to seek medical treatment. Now, obviously this isn't a medical grade device, but it's very good to see these trends. And I really, I'm really happy that they included on the smaller form factor because typically SPO2 tracking is something that you would typically get on a larger device or more expensive and it uses more battery and shortens the battery life overall. And to finally wrap up the health section, what I really like about it is that it just works. It's just very simple. Now you just go, go for a walk, go for a run, go for a swim, go for an exercise, skateboarding, for example, in my case, I'm very impressed that it's able to auto detect it. So you have to be doing that, that motion, that repetitive motion for 10 minutes, and it's gonna track it. Then you can look back at your logs, your calendar, and then see, oh, well, I've been exercising all these days. I feel very proud of it, and I'm making really good adjustments to my health because I can actually see the data and see the improvements over time. Now, the only downside with the health tracking is, like I said, as I mentioned in my con section, my downsides, is that I wish it would be able to be able to track my weightlifting um, exercises, being able to, you know, when you do strength training, lift weights, it would be amazing that it could detect that exercise as well. So hopefully in a future update, it can do something like that. So the clip accessory is quite nifty in that if you wanna track your exercise or steps without wearing anything on your wrist, then this optional accessory is gonna be quite useful. I can see this being very helpful for medical professionals like doctors and dentists, where sometimes they can't wear anything on their wrist during their practice. Sometimes I use the clip-on accessory when I'm skateboarding because I don't want anything on my wrist, I get really sweaty, and I can check the time and make sure that I'm not late for work every so often while skateboarding. So right now we're at a skate park and I'm gonna try the Fitbit clip. I'm gonna take off this band, unbuckle it, and then just put it in here. So let's show you how to use it down. Very easy to take it off. Very easy, I like that. We're just gonna put it in here. 
and that goes in really easy. So before I clip it on, I have to make sure that it's on the clip mode. So I'm gonna swipe down and go into settings. And it's really bright outside. I can really see the screen. It's very easy to see. And I like that it auto adjusts brightness. So it has an ambient sensor. Heart rate, sleep score, and other features won't be available. I'm gonna say yes. And if I ever wanna check the time while I'm skateboarding, because it's a very important, I can just quickly look down. It's like, oh, it's 11.32. I gotta go back to work. All right, let's test this thing. Okay, so on to the most important section. How does this compare to its bigger brother, the Charge 5? Now, I've had both devices for quite a long time and I'm able to give a really good comparison. And I have to say, if you're trying to save money and you don't need things like an internal GPS, which this doesn't have a GPS, it does, it does have a connected GPS, so basically piggybacks off your phone's GPS in order to get an accurate run report. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have an EDA sensor or ECG sensor. So those are things that I didn't really, really use that much on the Charge 5, if I were to be honest. So I don't really miss them at all. Now the Charge 5 is a little bit more premium in terms of its bands. It has a better locking mechanism. It does have a magnetic charger. Some of the pros for the Inspire 3 the small is the obviously the smaller form factor. You kind of feel it less on your wrist, and I really like that. I think it does have a longer battery life, and it's just obviously less expensive, so it's easier on the wallet. And I feel like the UI is a little bit more responsive. Now, in terms of similarities, both are both have a very nice always-on display, OLED display with deep blacks, very nice contrast. Both are very small and compact and very are very simple to use and kind of like a more passive device. So you don't have to worry about fiddling with it too much. But yeah, I think the, uh, the obvious cons with the smaller device is that it's harder to see. So maybe if you have uh, like vision problems, maybe it's better to get the Charge 5 or even upgrade to the Versa, which is like the, the bigger watches and stuff like that. It does have a kind of a big bezel, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm doesn't really you don't you don't really see the bezel because it's obviously an OLED display. So it uses black for the background. So it kind of just morphs into the device. Obviously, the Charge Five is going to have a lot less bezel on its own display. The last thing I want to mention is that the Charge 5 does support Fitbit Pay, which is a very handy feature. Let's say you're going for a run, you're jogging, and you want to buy a water bottle at a convenience store, you can just tap to pay. So that's very convenient. This is where a lot of savings are put onto the consumer, is with that. With the Inspire 3, you don't have Fitbit Pay. So this is something to consider in your purchasing decision. So in the end, how do I wrap this up? Well, the Inspire 3 is a really small compact device. It's very simple to use, has accurate health long-term trend reports that are very important for your overall making great, great decisions for your health. I really like the display, it's OLED, it's very colorful, it's very vibrant, and I love that it has an always on display so that I don't have to look rude in meetings when I, when I glance at my watch. Overall, I think the cons definitely are you know fair trade-offs if you're gonna save a little bit of money and have that smaller form factor. It's really up to you. Do you wanna get the Charge 5 or do you wanna get the Inspire 3? It really depends on what you value most and really think about what features you're actually gonna be using from the more expensive uh, watches or fitness trackers and see do, do you actually really need them personally for myself i think i'm more than happy with a simple device i don't need more tech gadgets and everything so i'm going to go be going with the inspire 3 for quite some time and i'll give you an update how it is maybe six months from now and uh, yeah that's it for this video if this video helped you anyway please do give a like it really helps out the channel it took a lot of time and effort to make this video and if you have any questions or comments please let me know in the comment section down below thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video